You want to start or me? I'll start and then you can go. <laughs> no, it's okay. We're I'm, being I'm good funny. at editing. <laughs> I'm just going to just run it. All right. <laughs> Ready? After you, sir. Good morning, Bitcoins, and welcome to Mad Bitcoins, live at the Coin Congress Conference in San Francisco. I'm joined by Tina Hui from Follow the Coin. Do you have anything to say, Tina? Hey, folks, I'm Tina Hui with Follow the Coin. Thanks for joining us at Coin Congress, and it's nice to catch up with you. Absolutely. We haven't seen you in a while. I know you've been traveling a lot. Where have you been searching for the best in Bitcoin interviews? Well, let's see. We've been to Necker Island. We've been to Los Angeles to Moe's conference. I'm blanking on the name right now. What was it called? Um, Keynote. Keynote, yes. yes. And then also we've been New York, you know, inside Bitcoins, then here and, you know, everywhere. So I think it's important to travel because that's where you get to see what Bitcoin's ecosystem is like on the ground level. And what did you find when you saw the ecosystem? Who was the best interview that you've had so far? I would actually say Bruce Fenton was actually wonderful as an interviewer and um, Jeff Garzik, of course, Bitcoin Core developer. I think that they are doing some really fascinating, interesting things and that's what was great about Necker Island and the Blockchain Summit because it was not just about Bitcoin and not just about startups, it was about using the blockchain and Bitcoin for good, social impact. And I think that's an important thing to remember when we're doing a money transmitter business or you know, creating startups. It's about the positive impact you want to make in the world, right? So. Absolutely, and you were at Necker Island, so did you get to meet your lookalike, Lucy Liu? I did not. She was teleported in, so she basically was on a giant screen. She might look alike. She's a lot taller. That's only at home. They can't tell at home. At, on camera, you look very tall. Oh, yeah. I'm not very tall at all. How tall are you? 5'10". I am 5'2". <laughs> Finally, someone that I'm taller than. So many of these camera shots, you'll notice the camera's shooting up into the sky because the people are ridiculously tall, and I'm just standing next to them. Well, I have that, uh, you know, all, every single time we do any interview. Actually, Wit, you know, have you met Wit? Yeah, yeah. So Wit, Bitwit, I think, is his uh, Twitter handle. Sure. He's actually 15 years old and an intern at Tether and I think a bunch of other projects. I Working don't remember Working on Ethereum, Ethereum, I know. Ethereum. It's very cool. So he's actually taller than me. Oh, no. <laughs> Without him. You're going to say the opposite, that you finally found someone that you can interview on your level. No. But, uh, you know, I in my mind, I'm seven feet tall, so not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So what do you have going on in the future with Follow the Coin? What are you guys going to do next that you haven't done yet? Well, we definitely have the BitBall coming in December so or November. We're going to try and get a venue in November so everybody can kind of plan their holiday better. But we hope everybody comes out to the second annual BitBall Awards Gala. That's FinTech Bitcoin. You get to vote. We're going to kind of come up with a, we're trying to come up with a voting platform maybe on the blockchain. Possibly, fingers crossed, if our developer team actually gets uh, that going. If not, we'll just use the same peer-to-peer -peer, uh, decentralized platform we did last year. And basically, everybody can vote on things like best CEO, best technology, best fintech payments, and mobile payment uh, application. And then we are in stealth, but we are actually redoing our website. And a bunch of cool new things hopefully will come out, and maybe even a fintech app. Very cool. Now I know. You, well, last year I know the bit ball for me was rained out. There was an incredible storm that night, and I would be driving in from Sacramento a few hours away, and it just wasn't happening. Are, are you going to affect the weather this year and have another rainstorm? Let's hope not. I was actually uh, in bed crying because I had told people, don't worry, the storm, they always say it's bad, but it's not that bad. And then it turns out it was really bad. It was pretty bad. A lot of people were flooded into their cars and no amount of Bitcoin is going to save you from a flood, I tried, let me I was tell praying. you. I was like, please, why is it actually hailing? But, you know, they called it the Godzilla storm. And L.A. couldn't come in, but people, you know, Matthew Rosak came from the East Coast, Perry yeah, Ann, yeah. a bunch of folks, so they made it. Somehow the West Coast couldn't get their things together. It was just too far to drive, really, come on. And Sacramento, it can get dicey when you're on the road. And especially even from the South Bay, my team, uh, part of my team was in Palo Alto, and it was, they were driving through floods that were, you know, almost as big as the tires. What do you think... So what about you? I want to ask you a few questions since, you know, we're on Follow the Coin show as well. What do people call you, Mad? They call me Mad. <laughs> or Maddie? Or Maddie. 
Or Mr. Maddie? Maddie, if they're more personal, maybe a little flirty. I get that a lot. Oh, yeah, flirty from the dudes. All the dudes are big fans of mad bitcoins. So tell us, what's going on, Mad? What's going, you know, what are you going to work on in 2015 and 2016? Well, right now I've got a new plan for Bitcoin adoption. It's really simple. All you have to do is spend. Spend bitcoins. You buy them and then you spend them. Where do you, you recommend people buy them? Well, you can buy them wherever you want, but I recommend people spend them on purse.io, where I'm now working. <laughs> obvious plug but what you can save 20 percent off amazon i'm advertising just like right now i'm telling people on twitter i'm telling people on facebook you can save 20 percent spending bitcoin and if we just spend bitcoin that's what a currency needs currency means to flow like the current and our currency with bitcoin too many hoarders too much bitcoin sitting around we need to get it flowing and it just takes spending so don't think of it as investment. Don't think, oh, no. A lot oh, of people no. do those, so what these, do you say to them? These sunglasses are worth half a Bitcoin. These are the world's most valuable sunglasses. No, you have to think, I got those sunglasses for a good deal. I bought the Bitcoin to get the sunglasses, and that was that. It's I have an, an idea. Can you take off those sunglasses? No one knows no. what you're thinking. <laughs> That's part of the genius of this whole thing. I can read my teleprompter, and no one can see my eyes are moving. Or there's lack of transparency. There's a lack of transparency because these glasses are reflective. I have to be cheeky, right? That's the shtick with all the coins. So. There it is. So here we are. Look, there's eyes back there. He's not eyeless. I have eyes. So tell us, what do you say to those folks who say Bitcoin is a commodity versus a currency and currency versus a commodity? I think it can be both. I think gold was a currency and a commodity. And it still is for a lot of people who accept gold. What do you think about asset classes now declining in price? Like commodities in general because of the general collapse of the markets? Yeah. I think that Bitcoin is the asset class that you want to hold because more and more as these countries collapse, people are going to go into Bitcoin as a natural safe haven. Whereas they used to go into commodities, but not anymore. And why do you think it's a safe haven? Because Bitcoin is technologically superior to other money. You can email it around like you can email around an MP3. And as we saw, MP3s were superior to CDs. And now the iTunes store rules everything. So I'm sure in the future, Bitcoins are superior to dollars and they'll rule everything. Well, what's nice about it uh, beyond dollars is it's an international currency. And I think what it's doing in emerging markets is the most fascinating use case. What's your favorite use case? I like spending it on purse. So do you buy purses? Only for my greatest admirers. I always buy my purses at 20% off. What purses do you buy at 20% off? I like bright red ones. Oh, I like red. Red is my favorite color. Is it your favorite color? Sometimes, but it's a little too bright for me. I'm more into black. But you buy red purses. Because they look so nice. <laughs> they, match, okay, they, match, they match my eyes. They're very red most of the time. Oh, with the glasses on. You're, they're not red in person. What color are they in person? They're bluish green. Bluish green. So tell us, um, what is Mad Bitcoins doing in the future? Like, what do you guys, what, why Purse? How did that come about? And what do you like about working with Purse? Well, the, the best part is it's in San Francisco. And this is just where Bitcoin's happening. I go to a lot more meetups now. I meet a lot more people who are into the same things that I'm into, which is Bitcoin. Spending them. And spending them. Which is, again, people have to get behind that. You have to spend them, right? You can't just let them sit in your account. And I know I was doing that. I had my little pile I was saving for the future. And someday they'll be worth a million dollars. And by that time, a million dollars won't be worth anything. Right. Um, but at least I can have my million dollars and buy a Coca-Cola for a million dollars. Why not? You know, it's still, it's still a perfectly valid Coca-Cola, just like all those people paying with wheelbarrows full of Deutschmarks still got a loaf of bread, a very expensive loaf of bread, and a lot of counting to get all those bills, but still, bread. So tell us, what do you think about, um, I guess, where Bitcoin is headed and blockchain and the whole debate between blockchain versus Bitcoin? Well, I think a lot of people are afraid of Bitcoin because Bitcoin can't be controlled. And a lot of people have tried to control Bitcoin and tried to tie it up to their system and this and that. But eventually, I think you realize you can just do Bitcoin for yourself. 
If you're a merchant, you don't need BitPay to do your merchant stuff. You can just use blockchain or any wallet. If you're a spender, you don't need to keep your money in Coinbase or local Bitcoins. You can use AirBits or Bread Wallet. There's choices in Bitcoin, and that's why I think Bitcoin is so exciting for the future. I agree. So tell us, what is the differentiating factor of Purse.io? Well, it's a marketplace where you can spend Bitcoin, and what we have is an escrow system. So you order your wish list, someone comes along, agrees to buy it, you put up the Bitcoins in escrow, and when you get your stuff, you, we release the Bitcoins. So it's a very safe system. If something goes wrong there, we'll cancel the order, we'll give you your Bitcoin back. It's a trusted third party. And a lot of people think that maybe this is how online shopping should have been done in the first place. Uh, Amazon's very trustworthy because we have thousands of transaction history with and them. And different merchants. And different so merchants. Many. But what if you said, well, I, I can't trust that merchant. I want my Bitcoin or I want my money held by a third party before I get my stuff. For a lot of people, that seems very reasonable. And you can do that at Purse. We have an escrow system. Very cool. So can you describe what the difference is between an escrow system and a custodial uh, hold? An escrow system is where you're holding the Bitcoin for a specific purpose. Uh, when you put money on purse, it's spending money. The goal of that money is to be spent. Maybe you spend it today, maybe tomorrow, maybe in a couple days, but it gets spent. Where I'd say a custodial system is more like, we'll hold your savings for you, we'll hold your retirement. It's a very much more trustworthy system, something like Zappo, where it's a vault, or maybe Coinbase Vault where you have extra security to keep your Bitcoin secure. Although I do suggest everyone should learn how to print out paper wallets, maybe try out the Ledger or the Trezor. There's a lot of options out there about holding your own Bitcoins. And that's really what Bitcoin is truly about is responsibility. You can be your own bank, but that also means if you lose your money, there's no one to cry to. You are your own bank. You are SOL. Absolutely. Whatever that stands for. Oh, they could Google it. I'm not swearing. <laughs> Very good. Do you have some more questions for me as you've taken over this interview? Well, I'm sorry. Maybe I just wanted to know what you think about the conference as well. The conference has been good. I talked to a lot of people this morning. I think it could have been a two-day conference really easily. There are a lot of great speakers, and many of them only spoke for 15 minutes at a time. So maybe half hour or even 45 minutes with questions, presentations would be a little better. Uh, and a lot of people flew down for this. Uh, so yeah, bigger conferences, longer conferences is what I'd like to see. What was your favorite panel? Well, I haven't seen any panels yet, but I... I enjoyed seeing uh, Jason from Sean's Outpost speak. He's got some really exciting things. He's got a food delivery app that's going to help feed the homeless. If you had extra spaghetti in your kitchen, you wanted to get rid of it, someone else wants to take the extra spaghetti and someone else wants to eat it, the taker could come to your house, pick it up, and take it to the person who wants to eat it. Done. Food for everybody. That is very cool. I didn't know that that's what he's working on. So awesome. It's the food. Uber for food. What's it called? Sean's Outpost, maybe? Sean's Outpost, but it was called like Send Me or You Send Me or something like that. I, I forget the name, but it's under Sean'sOutpost.com. You can check it out. Way to go, Jason. Thank you. It's very cool. I also liked uh, Jesse from Kraken gave a good speech about Kraken and what they're doing at the exchange and how they've recently left New York. What do you uh, think about that? What do you think about all those companies? Um, you know, I was talking to him earlier, and we actually spoke about maybe doing a poll. So get on followthecoin.com, facebook.com slash followthecoin. We're going to do a poll on both the website and Facebook about which companies are going to continue working with, you know, compliance with BitLicense and working out of New York and with New York, and which ones are pulling out. And it's going to be interesting. We were kind of curious if there's maybe a mass boycott of doing business in New York with Bitcoin. It's definitely starting to look like that. Most of the major names, Bitfinex, Shapeshift, Kraken, uh, Airbits even, have pulled out of New York. I think the real question people want to know is, is Follow the Coin going to pull out of New York? No more Follow the Coin videos for New York. Uh, we're actually not. It, the bit license doesn't affect us. We're just media. How about you guys? Mad Bitcoins is pulling out of New York. Why is that? We just can't take it anymore. <laughs> no, I think it's important even the underserved communities, such as New York will become underserved for Bitcoin, need kind of representation and to be heard, you know? New, New York as a third world country that doesn't have access to Bitcoin anymore, it sounds pretty dire. For well, the they get the it. NYDFS, so I guess maybe they don't need it. But I think it's interesting if you talk to the open source, uh, what is it, NYDFSO 
I, it's a really big acronym. Yeah. I forget, guys. I forget. But it's all uh, they're talking about how in New York they kind of like how Bitcoin is it disrupting finance, and then they love having media like be out there talking about what you can do to change Wall Street in the way it's been run, which. It's you know controversial, but true to say, maybe a little bit stodgy, political, corrupt, um, and really, really heavy-handed. So. Well, they definitely change things with a bit license. No other state is doing what New York is doing now. Well, I don't know. There might be some other states kind of quietly trying to piggyback off of New York. Who knows where California is going to land, right? Well, I hope California doesn't pass a bit license because I'd hate to leave California too. But those other states, Carolinas, Kentucky, whatever you're thinking about, I think I can afford to leave them too. Colorado's friendly, so that's good. Colorado sounds very nice. So, um, shall we keep talking or what else is there to cover? Well, let's tell people where can they go to see Follow the Coin videos. Please go to followthecoin.com. We are redoing our website. So far, it's been me hacking it together. So sorry for the UX issues. <laughs> Sometimes when you're a sole person, you have to do it all yourself. It is quite the feat. How about you guys? Well, you can find out about Mad Bitcoins at madbitcoins.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at madbitcoins. It's and pretty repetitive. We're on Twitter as well, follow the coin or Tina Hui, or you can also go on Facebook. Our Facebook group is where we're curating the top stories in fintech investments and Bitcoin. So we've actually expanded and we syndicate directly to the Bloomberg News Terminal. Ooh, very cool. I've heard people say that fintech's only for sharks. What do you say to that? I think they're wrong. I think if you take a look at uh, innovation that's happening in the tech and fintech sphere, there's a lot of similar si companies and founder structures as Bitcoin, where people care about making money accessible to people. Again, you know, maybe not with just Bitcoin, which is more of the libertarians and anarchists, but you look at Uber, you look at Airbnb, you're like giving power back to citizens to make money on the go, right? And I think that means you're not really a shark. Maybe you're a shark against finance, but you know. Ooh, definitely. taking the metaphor a little further there. I like it. <laughs> I mean, we're all sharks. I think entrepreneurs are sharks. And Do remember that dolphins and whales also have fins, so it's not just sharks. So any uh, kind of big fish, we're all fish. We're all fish in a big ocean, and we all live in a yellow submarine. Melting pot. Well, it was great uh, chatting with you. Are you going to come to the Bitball? I'll try to this time. I'm living a little closer, as long as the flood doesn't affect uh, no, some I of the hills pray here. for no floods. Please, no more floods. No, there's going to be a major flood at the Bitball. I've talked to some people. They know weather, so we'll see. Hey, don't say that. I am glad, though. Thank you for everybody who did weather the storm and make it out, and those who also got ambushed by the storm. It was really great to see everybody, and it was a good time, you know? Everybody came out, they were in good spirits, and you got to get swag, which I don't have on me right now, but I'll get you one, yeah. so, yeah. Well, very cool. Thanks, Tina, for being on my show, and thanks for letting me be on your show. Thank you, also. Keep up the good work. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>